2014 has been an incredible year for video on Autocar. We've pitched cars against motorbikes, cars against cars, and sometimes, just for fun, cars against full-on racers as well. Over the past 12 months, we've watched three of the most eagerly anticipated hypercars ever made come to fruition, and we've pushed all three to the limit on track. First came the Porsche 918 Spyder, which we tested at the back end of 2013. The 918 is Porsche's halo supercar, and its hybrid powertrain develops a combined 874 brake horsepower and 944 pound-foot. Suffice to say, we thought it was simply incredible, and we came away thinking the 918 people who now own a Spyder are very lucky indeed. Porsche had set the bar pretty high for McLaren and Ferrari to follow then, but at the end of January, McLaren responded by giving journalists their first go in the 903 brake horsepower P1. We drove the car in Bahrain, both on track and on the road, and if the 918 had shown us what hybrid tech could bring to a modern hypercar, McLaren showed us how it could also remain fun and involving to drive. At the end of our drive, we posed a question. Yes, the P1, in our opinion, is a better driver's car than the 918 Spyder, but would LaFerrari be able to blow both out of the water? We only had a few months to wait to find out, as in April, Ferrari finally let us loose in the 950 brake horsepower LaFerrari at its Fiorano test track. Among its raw power and electronic aids, we found a revelation that Ferrari's long-awaited hypercar was also very easy to drive, and that made it even more appealing. Of course though, our video year hasn't been dominated by these super expensive, super powerful cars. We've also tested some more down-to-earth models. How about the £24,995 Xenos E10? It's built by former Lotus and Caterham engineers and offers up to 200 brake horsepower, enough for plenty of thrills on track. Or what about the Volkswagen Golf R? It's a riot to drive and, as we've proven, can also hold its own against rivals like Seat's Leon Cupra 280. We've also had our first chance to drive some of 2014's hottest new metal, like Audi's new TT, the Lexus RCF, Aston Martin's V8 Vantage N430, and the BMW i8. In October, we took all of the best cars we tested this year to Castle Coombe, with one simple question to answer. What is Britain's best driver's car for 2014? Candidates included Porsche's 911 GT3, the Aerial Atom 3.5R and Jaguar's F-Type. But after two days of testing, a clear winner emerged, and we crowned Ferrari's 458 Speciale as champion. Whether it's driving a new supercar built by an ex-plumber in Holland, as was the case with the Venza Saaf, learning how to handle a rally stage at the hands of Citroen's WRC car, or taking the new Nissan Qashqai on an epic 5,000 mile road trip across Europe, we've aimed to bring you a small slice of what has been an amazing 12 months in cars.